up for his first test right now. If he can get Who past this test, he goes to the next nighttime Olympic fight, maybe August the 1st, against Animal Lopez, and then we will know whether he is back in the title picture or not. Tonight is the first step on that long road back to the heavyweight championship, which he feels belongs to him and him alone. You know, it was here in Montreal in 1976 that he suffered a stunning defeat by Teofilo Stevenson, a great puncher. He was able to overcome that. And we'll see oh, whether tonight here in Montreal he's able to do it again. Big John, Big John is a good, good, good fighter and a good kid. I, we visited with his family in Memphis when we were doing a piece on him. Here he is well loved throughout all of Tennessee. He's the kind of a guy that won't let a little thing like this bother him. He'll come right back fighting because this is his profession. But we'll see what he does tonight. Let's not count Mr. Burbick out so fast because he's got a very good record. There are knowledgeable people who think this is going to be a very good test of John Tate. I'm one of them. Trevor Burbick being announced to the crowd. Do you notice on the back of John Tate's jacket? Big John, I love America. What do you mean? I really throw out the uh, Arthur Stevenson fights. I object to even name Arthur Stevenson because when they get to the travesty of having an aged and ancient man fighting amateur kids that are just coming up, I think it is just disgraceful. Disgraceful. I've never been able to get over that. That they can let this man who should have been fighting in the pros 10 years ago fight these young kids from the amateur programs is just a absolute disgrace. Freddie, I can understand your point. The other thing is maybe the system of government that he operates under won't give him a chance because you remember Laszlo Pop, the great middleweight from Hungary, oh, I, who won all the championships and oh, just couldn't fight. I, I absolutely, I am not blaming uh, Theophilus at all, who I understand is a very nice kid and a good uh, fighter. He just, there, are, there is no professional fighting. He has to fight amateur. I'm saying that the Olympic Committee should have a limit somewhere along the line. 30-year-old guys fighting for the title? Come on now. Look at the staring now. Tate and Burbick going eye to eye. I tell you, fellas, you're pretty good at it, but there ain't nobody that compares to El Diablo, oh, yeah. Duran. Last second instructions from the referee, and Big John Tate. You're looking at him now. It's his first test since the disaster with Mike Weaver. They call it they call him the fighting machine in, in Tennessee because he just fights from bell to bell. Let's see what happens. They're both wearing white trunks. A red trim. That makes it nice. Burbick is the shorter of the two. Burbick coming in on Big John. Coming right out. He's got business in mind. The big Jamaican. The one, his one blemish is the knockout by Bernardo Ricardo. Well, that's no blemish. Ricardo can punch big enough to knock down a building. He is the number one heavyweight in the world, you know, so that is no big disgrace. I think the corner told him, go out, he might be cold. If you catch him flush, you could take him out. I think so. Because that's exactly what Burbick is trying to do. He certainly has not wasted any time. And he shows no fear of, uh, of John. John has been very calm. He's taken all of that in stride, not gotten hit hard. Look at the body definition of Burbick. Ooh. Isn't that sensational? Big, strong guy. Two big, strong guys. Big John is pretty strong himself. Great upper body strength. Well, Burbick's doing all the fight. Ah, right hand by John, but Burbick comes right back at him. We're going to find out shortly whether John is gun shy. I, I don't think John would be gun shy. He has landed a couple of very hard punches, but they, they were not wildly evident. I mean, they were inside kind of hard punches. Step he, off the right hand of the body, John. They're yelling for Tate to go to the body. We must have Step a mic real body, close John. to Ace Miller, who's uh, Tate's manager. I don't think you need a mic with Ace Miller. I think they can hear him in Knoxville without the mic. <laughs> Ace can really holler. In South Africa, we can, when he fought for the title, you can hear Ace Miller all over the auditorium. I always uh, wondered about Tate until I saw him beat Panuza and then Kotsia. Both tough tests. Well, he's working very good right now. Right now, he's right down to the body. He's doing his homework. 
And the other fellow started out very fast with a lot of adrenaline pumping, and he's breathing out of his mouth now. And getting hit. John is very methodical. He, that's why they call him the fighting machine. He has his plan. He sticks to it. He works. He works. Got to be in shape to do that. Oh, yeah. And you got to be well-schooled. He's very well-schooled with the corner. They have him really where he fights exactly the way they, they want him to. After all, he was beating uh, Mike Weaver quite decisively when he got hit. And I'm surprised that he has let this man come in that way. He, those blows, by the way, the right hand didn't catch him flush. We're coming down to the end of round number one, about five, four, three, two seconds. John on his toes, just moving away and getting comfortable about it. And we follow John to his corner. It'll be interesting to see what Ace Miller has to say he ought to do from now on in. I must tell you <laughs> that this may be a distraction. It's a good thing Tate has turned away because we have a marvelous looking French Denzel, French Canadian Denzel, I should say. You're right, Judge. Uh, Senor Pacheco, you're, you're, you're first time I've seen you lost for words in two days. <laughs> you can understand why. And here we come to the just before round. I think the first round was uh, all Tate. It wasn't all Tate. It was a pretty even round, but Tate pulled it out. He let he let the first part of that round go by until he got busy, and then he went down to business. Now. The bell rang. Burbick stayed an extra 10 seconds on the stool, like, which is very unnerving if you're doing that after the first round. I mean, he couldn't possibly be busy, after, uh, be tired after the first round. Tate seems a little lethargic to me so uh, far. I was just going to say, it, it, the one rap about Tate is he, he is so unemotional that he seems like he's not even interested in the fight. He, he did that also in, uh, in South Africa when he was fighting Katsia. A, he has that blank face, so it doesn't even look like he's up for it or he's excited about it. He's just taking it in stride and letting it go. He's not what he's not really what you call an exciting fighter. You know, he's a methodical. He gets there. He does his job, but he's not that exciting thing like Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, all of those champions that came out and really punched and ate people up. Probably mostly, Freddie, because he's really not that good a puncher. Sure, he'll say. hurt you, you know, when you weigh 225, 230. But he's not the kind of guy that when he hits you that one shot, you're not going to do that. But you know what I, I, what I mean is he just doesn't have the, the animation, the fire that, uh, that those kind of fighters had. He just sort of takes it in stride. He, he does his work. It's not really exciting. I must admit I'm surprised with Burbick. When I was told about Burbick Tate, I figured, uh-huh. But uh, Bob Arum said to me, don't kid yourself, Burbick's no pushover for him, and he hasn't been. As of now, he's come out, and he's the man who's doing all the leading, but he took a good right hand from Tate then, and he may take some more. He threw a, Tate just threw a right hand lead and hit him with it, and uh, they're both exchanging pretty evenly. Burbick is certainly not backing off of him. He just landed a good overhand right. Now, Burbick has, has had the better of all of these. Tate has not been uh, fast. He is lethargic, as you pointed out. He's not really any fast hand speed. He's been getting hit by some stupid punches by Burbick. I mean, things that he shouldn't get hit by. He just doesn't seem warmed up to me, Bertie. He really doesn't. He got hit with a right hand moving in. I mean, I thought he'd be hurt by that. I think the best thing that could happen to him is he got shook up with a punch and woke him up and, and uh, made him understand he's got to start now. Uh, unless this corner wants him to get the work in, I cannot understand why he's not fighting with a little, a little bit more fury and fire. Burbick, the shorter of the two men, Tate the taller. Most of you know Tate by sight, I'm sure. Uh, they're both wearing white trunks. Tate's got the red shoes on. He's got the red ring shoes, and Burbick has the white shoes. By the way, they're fighting with 10-ounce gloves, not 8-ounce gloves. Uh, and some people think it makes a great deal of difference. I've not been one of those. No, and you're right, Bertie, because I've talked to a great many glove manufacturers. They say the only difference in the lighter glove is it cuts a man more. Tate still not warmed up at the end of round number two, and they both go to their corners. There's a great deal of instruction uh, given by Ace Miller and that crowd. 
because they all um, have plan. They have a game plan that they, that they call. They fight each round uh, by plan. I think the plan better call for a little bit of action here because they have been pretty equal through the first two. You have to realize that the judges are, are also a little prejudiced for an ex-heavyweight champion. And when a round is even, I would imagine it goes to tape. But they have been, in all truthfulness, in all truthfulness, they have been pretty even. On the other hand, this girl was a lot better than the other. I was just going to say not <laughs> only that, but she's been the warmest part of the evening so far. Uh, Burbick, with a one mark on his record, a knockout by Bernardo Mercado, and you, as you said, Mercado caught him the first. Mercado can really hit with that left hand, as Ernie Shavers found out. So, you know, that's no big deal. But now let's take a look and see if Tate finally gets the adrenaline going and starts doing something because Big John has let Trevor Burbick take the play away from him. This is a scheduled 10 rounder. We're in round number three, and the next bout will be Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran for the WBC World welterweight championship you know you, you have to say uh, uh, for the public Trevor Howard has a 16 and 4 record of the 16 fights he's had 12 knockouts so that you're talking about a man who can punch you're not talking a man about a man who's just in there for the payday he can level Tate and that would be a disaster in his career we have a oh I see Tate's he's in good shape his trunks came down a little bit no yes. gut to hang on. Well, Tate is in good shape. I, I, I find him physically in good shape. He has, you know, has a tendency to get fat. He has not any of that fat on. In fact, he looks, he looks like even as good as he did in Africa that night when he won the title. He's making a mistake on down that low, though, uh, Ferdy, because twice he's been butted by Burbick, and uh, you can get hurt that way as much as you can with a glove. That right hand, he's catching a lot. He, he, he doesn't seem able to get off at all. He can't do a lead at all. Oh, great right hand by Tate. A great straight right hand. Who, Burbick was having a pretty good gym. Yeah. <laughs> he just got hit by a thunderous right hand by a very heavy... Another one. one. Oh, Tate got him with that one, too. Tate Might is, have been a little short. Tate is just teeing off, just getting the number now. Of course, the guy, the guy just nodded at him, like saying, yeah, that's right, that's two. But he did not stop him, and he's back again. See how loose the ropes are? They're too loose. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Duran and Leonard with those loose ropes. Herbert trying to keep in, but just fill a couple of raindrops. The only reason I mention it, that right hand hurts, that right to the body. He hurt Burbick with it, and Burbick's a little wild now. You know, uh, Burbick is... is Brother Amateur is coming in with, a, with those punches like that, and I am surprised that John has not really made him pay a price to come in. He comes in sort of paddling along with the lefts and rights. John should really set himself and let the right hand fly. It would be all over. I think John now is starting to find the ring. I do believe. Has he got him hurt? No, he just made a good move and ducked under it. You don't see too many heavyweights with that kind of maneuverability like Burbage just showed. I'm surprised that Tate has not gone to the body. He's got this man tired. There he goes. He's got this man tired. He can go to the body now and really put a clincher on this round. And the next round, he can really start leveling. But he's going head hunting here. You took the words right out of my mouth, I swear. <laughs> he really has. Look at, look at that. With a miss like that, there should be a ripping uppercut to the heart. Ferdy, take a look at this shot. Here's, here's a nice right hand that, that caught him just for wow. There it goes. Now that should hurt. Let me again remind you that all rights to this telecast are owned and reserved by BADK Incorporated. No transmission, retransmission, reproduction, or recording may be made or exhibited in any form or media without the express prior written consent of BADK Incorporated. I, I'm being tested. They put it up on the screen. I have to tell you something. Back in the old days, they didn't have girls walking around in the ring, and I think they were mistaken. Yes. Well, these girls, these girls that were modeling before, and they're slowly coming down to welterweight championship action. They started out in slacks, and now they're in bathing suits with tops. All part of boxing as we go to round four. I hope you notice that Irving Ungerman is in the corner with Trevor Burbick. He changed corners. He had the 
corner away from us, and now he's to the corner to the right. All right, let's see whether John Tate has finally found the range. He was starting to catch Burbick coming in with that right hand. There's a very, very light, misty smoke coming off of John Tate. This weather is so cold, and he's perspiring, and that uh, vaporizing off leaves a little contrail for us uh, World War II fighter pilots. Tate now starting to become the aggressor in moving in, going to the body. His corner must have seen the same thing we did because he really has not punished this man's body. And had he been doing that, I think Trevor would be just about ready to go now. Both men in white trunks take the man with the red boxing shoes. You Tate know, seeming more... There is no lesson to, to I, him now. I think, I think his corner uh, has said, okay, it's time to get down to action now. Let's go takes a little time for John to warm up, too. He's not one of those fighters that comes out roaring at the bell. He's very methodical. There he goes. Rights and lefts, rights and lefts. Not all landing, but the impact is going to be there on Trevor. He's there, right. Well, you can tell his foot speed has gotten up a little bit. He doesn't seem, as I said, the only word I can think of is lethargic. And Trevor doesn't seem to be picking off those blows, either. He seems to be taking a lot with his face. It's hard, John. Put the heat on him, you go. The fight of the decade coming up. One of the great fights. We think Roberto Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard. Burbick's hanging in there. I'll say one thing about him. He hasn't been impressed by Tate's being a former WBA world's champion in the heavyweight division. Ace just keeps saying, put the heat on him. He's ready to go. He may not be ready to go, but he really needs to put the heat on him. Now. There was a winging right hand that missed by a mile. That's the kind of punch, if it lands, it's all over. You know, Freddie, there's a basketball player in the NBA named John Williamson. Tate is, they look so much alike that part of the time I think I'm looking at Williamson changing profession. Well, we're about ready for a slam dunk here because uh, John has just started to really start cooking on him good. Yeah, now he hurt him. And you can hear Ace Miller hit him to the body. John should be digging to the body right there. In close, he should be digging. For every one body shot, he should land. For every one head shot, he should go down to the body for two body shots. John is just really cooking on him now. We're coming down the end of the round. Perfect. Catching now as Tate has begun to warm to his task. That is Trevor Burbick coming towards you. We'll be coming up at the start of a round. What do you do with a fighter like Tate, who is slow starting, to really get him going? You have to warm him up more in the dressing room. Well, you have to understand that these guys are in the corner have, have him slow starting. They, they're a, a peculiar uh, corner group that believe in programming a fight uh, methodically so that they they want their program to, to go like that very strange the Canadian Open is going to be played here in Canada very shortly and I notice they are welcoming Lee Trevino Tom Weisskopf Jack Nicholas and Tom Watson it's on now what you know something I forgot it was Friday I've been here all these days I thank you Wayne my AD just told me it's Friday. Round five, and John Tate almost ran across the ring. They must have told him, okay, this is the round that we've programmed you to knock him out, so go out there and do it now. John is fighting a lot faster now, a lot better. He's up on his toes. Yeah, he's, he's, he's ready to move. Him, yeah. He, he should be closing the distance in there. At the end of the last round, he got Trevor pretty tired and pretty ready to go because there were around three repetitive combinations that got him a little weary. He's revived, but John is back on top of his case. You see, John fights like they tell him. They tell him to fight fast, he goes out and fights fast. They tell him, take it easy. He takes it easy the first couple of rounds. I, I don't quite agree with that style of fighting. I like the old Angelo Dundee. Go out and do the best you can from the beginning bell. Bill Mazur with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco ringside at the Great Olympic Stadium in Montreal, Canada. And we are 
in the fifth round of a scheduled 10 rounder between the former WBA champion John Tate heavyweight champion and Trevor Burbick I had intended telling you later about the scoring they have a 10 point scoring system we'll go into that in more detail uh, before the Duran fight with Sugar Ray Leonard I tell you Burbick is no stiff Burbick keeps coming on he, he gets hit but he keeps coming on he just got hit coming in it didn't deter him for a moment he came right back with a punch and he's standing right in front of him punching oh they both exchanged right hands good exchange between the two men pretty you sure he isn't gun shy from that weaver thing this being his first fight it, it may well be that he's not throwing caution to the wind because uh, at this point he should be taking command but definite command of this fight there's there's where it pays right in the breadbasket I'm, I'm surprised this corner has let him get away without a, a really massive body assault to begin uh, this fight that's probably the most difficult thing to do with a fighter they are virtually there there all there's, there's now the he is yeah there's, there's the attack that he has. You see, see, see what happened to him? Now, there you go. There's the, there's right the attack. Right uppercut under that uh, left-hand lead. Tate is right above us, and he's been landing some very heavy body blows and then coming up to the head. He's been landing uppercuts, hooks, and he has, he's get, been getting uh, some shots in return. Burbick is not letting him get away with impunity. He has been nailing him some shots. You know, uh, John has not uh, had the greatest defense in this fight. No, he hasn't, and, and this has been a fairly close fight. Oh, listen, uh, let me tell you, with a good, with a good top professional like Burbick and, and many of the top-ranked fighters, John would be having a life and death struggle here. Burbick has not laid down. The end of round five, Trevor Burbick, who's built like a tight end, six feet two and a half, about 220 pounds. And when a guy weighs 220 in fighting shape, if he's in football shape, he goes about 235, 240. And Tate, of course, you know about his size. And uh, there are some very, very large men and lightsome women walking around in this ring just now. Bertie, I did not lead to the business about shape just because of that gal. But I will tell you this. Viva la France and viva la différence. Viva la différence. Well, the difference <laughs> here is... <laughs> that Trevor, Trevor Bobbick walked to the wrong corner at the end of that round. They're shaking out his arms, which is not one of the most wonderful things to do. Why did they do it? I, I, I'm wondering what he just did that for, because that's one of the things you tell cornermen, for God's sake, don't be shaking out people's arms. You can hurt elbows, you can pop uh, muscles, you know. John again ran out uh, to the task. Tate, the bigger man, the taller man, and, and really the bigger man, the heavier man, in the red shoes. Burbick moving in there, a la Joe Frazier, except that he doesn't smoke. Now he's trying to catch him with the right hand. He just keeps coming in, trying to get underneath Tate's left hand. You know, I mean, everybody knows that Tate got taken out, and he got hit with a good right hand there, and I'm not sure it didn't hurt him. He blinked a lot. He certainly got hit coming in. I don't know what, what he's doing, bouncing on his feet and circling this guy when he should be good, taking it right to him. There you go. Good right hand by John Tate. Another good right hand, but he got a good left, right and a left. Good exchange on the ropes. Perfect thinks he's got him. Tate using the peekaboo. Recovered. And the referee, what a job that is with these two super dreadnoughts. He just landed a straight, Burbick just landed a straight right hand and followed it with another straight right hand. A good heavyweight like John Tate should not get hit by that kind of punch. Burbick is certainly not backing off. He's standing there with him. He cannot get that left hand going for him. And without that left hand, did Tate get cut? Tate's got a little cut under his eye. It's bleeding right left under the left eye. Purdy, is he in trouble? No, no kind of trouble. Just a little slice. It's there, though. He just hit he hurt Tate, him. and Tate sagged into the ropes. Tate was hurt. Perfect just hit Tate, and Tate sagged into the ropes. He hurt him again. Crowd now going wild as the Jamaican is on top of Tate, who bangs back. He's got guts. 
Burbick has put Tate in trouble. He's swelling his eye up. He's got him cut. He's got him sagging into the ropes, and if John just doesn't get off, then Burbick is in command. This is a terrific uh, right hand. Was more a uh, push than a real hard punch by Tate. But Tate now starting to use it, and Miller is yelling at him, keep on fighting. Why do they always put a little guy in with two big heavyweights? And he's doing a good job. Referee. Tate, Tate keeps getting he's got him in trouble. He's got Perfect in trouble with a right hand. He's got him going right now. But he hasn't. John had John masked an attack just then he could have had Burbick. Bernie, what about the eye? Well, they're working on it. He's got good quartermen. I don't think it's a serious cut. I don't think it's significant. I don't think it'll do anything but get Tate worried enough to get started fighting. Now, there's in a better Burbick's shot. Corner, they're really working hard to revive him. They're really working hard to get those muscles going, and he is on the verge of a monumental upset. If he can get himself together, he has landing leather on big John Tate. Neither one. They're both tired. The referee had to get them both up. The bell rang. Burbick breathing heavily through the mouth. Tate. Tate's in a life and death struggle with this guy. He has got a big test in front of him, and his aspirations for the heavyweight championship are seriously in jeopardy here. If he does not come on and fight a fight of his life, he may lose this fight. We're in round number seven. Trevor Burbick, to your right, as you can see. Tate now with his back to you. Tate in those red shoes. You get a chance to see him. Burbick is a big, strong young man from Jamaica who now makes his home in Canada. And I'll tell you, what a misleader that one round knockout by Mercado Mercat must have caught him cold. Well, knockouts are very misleading, especially when you when you uh, talking about people who can punch like Mercado. But here is John Tate bouncing around when he should be taking the fight to him. It is incredible to me that he is bouncing around on his toes when he should be down digging his toes into the canvas and punching with Burbick. And Burbick is chasing. Now there, there's, there's the right hand. He heard him. Tate has just landed a left, right, left, right. But here, here comes Burbick. <laughs> Bertie, take a look at the biceps on Burbick. Yeah, that, they're, they're massive, but that doesn't mean anything when it comes to punches. Yeah, I know. But they're still impressive looking. Yes. What's impressive is that Burbick has not backed off of John Tate, and he's winging it with him. John's got to start using the right uppercut. John's got to start fighting. Yep, he really does. He's got to take command here. There you go. Good left and a right. A good left and a right by John Tate, but Burbick comes right back. Hit him a little high. Yes, they don't all land, but the fact is he's got to be throwing something. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, Burbick keeps swinging him. Well, I, I'm going to tell you something. This is no masterpiece of defense, but they're both doing very well on, on offense. They're both just exchanging. For two heavyweights this big to be exchanging these punches, it's rather incredible. 45. Yep. 45 seconds, and Burbick seems to catch his breath at the end of the fight, at the end of each round, and start coming on. Tate may catch him with that right hand over that drop left. He does the same thing, too. Tate's got to do something. Yeah, he really does. He's obviously in great shape. He always is. Oh, yeah. But he hasn't been able to take command of this guy. 15 seconds remaining in the seventh round. John Tate and Trevor Burbick. Tate was born for a low blow. 
and blood again coming from below his left eye. The end of round number seven, round number eight coming up. Pretty, you got to be surprised. I am. I am surprised at uh, the tenacity of Trevor Burbick, and I am surprised also that John has not, to Big John Tate, the fighting machine from Knoxville, Tennessee, has not gone in fighting. Now, here's the, the disadvantage of, a, of body punching. You come in very low. Now, there's a low blow. Now, that's hard. That's hard. That's got a smart. Of course, you're, you understand, low blows are not intentional usually. Now, that certainly wasn't uh, an intentional low blow, but it doesn't help you if you're catching it. As great a fighter as Max Schmeling was, he needed a low blow to win the World's Heavyweight Championship from Jack Sharkey. So that's that. where it all changed. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Sharkey always cried about that. There has to be a certain amount of pain. <laughs> yes. It, it doesn't feel good whether it's intentional or not. And it, it, it's just one of those things. But I must tell you one thing. Fighters wear tremendous protective cups. Again, the bell rings. Again, both fighters remain seated. The referee's having a tough time starting the rounds. I don't know whether Burbick is playing possum with him by coming out that slow. Because he's coming right in on John Ungerman. Has this young man geared for the fight of his life? And Tate, who is trying to get back into the heavyweight picture, has not improved. Oh, there was another right hand to a sacrosanct area. They're screaming from Tate's corner, go to the body. I think you can hear it. Another warning to Big John. Uh, John, John did push him down with, the, with his hand. Um, it's not one of those wild fouls, but he should be called for it. Coming up, Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran. Let me tell you, John's in danger of losing his trunks as well as his uh, title aspirations. Perfect with enough confidence now that he's thrown sneak right hands. Burbank's got a lot of confidence now. It's John that's walking around. Uh, now, look at this. There's an exchange where Burbank's getting the better. Yeah. Punching faster. You know, the, the Weaver fight was a little bit different from this in that John was in total command of the fight until the very end. Here, he was in command until the middle. But Trevor's come on since the middle. And uh, he is getting some beautiful shots by Trevor. Ferber got in a beautiful left hand. Didn't move John back, though. Now he's going back into the ribs. Ferber still almost like Weaver, but doesn't hit with the left hand the same way. John, but John's getting hit by yes, everything. John Tate is getting hit by everything. He's throwing punches underneath. Good left hand by Ferber. It uh, was met by a good right hand by Tate. Good fight. They're going back and forth. First grade, and you rarely see a heavyweight fight at this kind of a pace. And it was Ali and Frazier. Tate just landed a good three-punch combination, but look at that perfect. It doesn't seem to phase him. He just comes right in. That was a good three-punch combination. Tate's eye is getting swollen. The blood is running down his cheeks. Berber is unmarked. You notice, with all the leather he's taken, he has not got a lump on him. And he is still chasing Tate, which has got to cost him points. The aggressor in this fight from the last three or four rounds has been Berber chasing Tate, not the other way around. He hurt Tate. Just hurt him again. Hurt him. Tate's got two rounds. I think Tate's a little behind. Right now, Ferdy, just unofficially here. Because Burbick has been the aggressor and landed the harder punches, and Tate is really shaken up. And Burbick wants to. Let's do this. Now, watch this exchange here. Look at that flush punch, and look at what just missed. Had that landed, it would have been something. Now, here we get. Look at that connection. I'm telling you, these guys are winging it. These are two heavyweights in top action. You cannot see heavyweights go at each other as hard as this and something not go. I am shocked and amazed this fight's gone this far. This is a sensational heavyweight fight for the kind of leather they've thrown and the kind of punishment they've taken. There's the sugar still warming up. Now you can see he's got a good sweat because it's a cool night. He's got to get warm. That green belt that you see is the welterweight champion. Some hollers and no shrugs. Oh, perfect. 
Mike is all ready to go now. He's way off his stool. He is, and Ungerman has him going now. John is breathing hard. Yeah. Breathing very hard. Look at Burbick. He's up. He's ready to go. Did the bell sound? The bell apparently yeah. no, sounded now. Burbick is saying, Burbick, Burbick is saying the bell should have sounded. Look at this. Watch as he catches him a right hand. Now he's on the way down and a right to the back of the head. And he's chasing him and a left and a right to the back of the head. He's almost chased him all over the ring, punching him on the back of the head. Watch another replay. Let's look at another angle. Right hand on, high on the head. Left, which missed. Left, a right. Now that one landed very well. John's in trouble. Now he's running. A right hand, a left, a left, a right hand, and he goes down. Have you ever seen anything like that? A man running away from another man, and Burbick has killer instinct. Look at him. He, he hit him in the back of the head. Now, now watch this again for the fourth time. Watch the series of punches which puts him down. Frankly, that one did it. I do not believe. Now, he's out. He's going down. If he'd have left him alone, he'd have gone down. That, those punches are not effective. I thought the referee was slow getting to him. Yes, I really did. John Tate. Three, Rudy Ortega. So we are now going to be underway here with Palov, of course, the overwhelming favorite of the fans. A sight and quite an experience to see in the past couple of days since he arrived in town from his home up in Kula to see how literally everybody on the streets and buses, street corners, uh, recognized him. Anybody who saw him knew who he was. We're underway in round one. On your left, John Connie in white. Mate Perov in blue, now circling to your left. Mate Perlov, 21 wins, one loss. 